Thank you. Before sharing the sermon today, I would like to point out the white rose that is on the communion table today. Um, yesterday morning, Barbara Sterrett passed to eternal life, um, and we remember her with love. She just celebrated her 97th birthday with 25 family members around her. Our prayers go out to you, Steve, and your whole family. Um, and may her memory always be for a blessing for you. Would you join me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each one of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our salvation. Amen. They were everywhere. They were everywhere in the crowds. They were everywhere with Jesus. As he entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, they were there. They were leading the masses who dropped the palms on the ground before him. And I'm sure a couple of them ran back and picked them up because they liked them so much and they wanted to keep them for themselves. They were there in the outer areas of the temple when Jesus was praying and then flipping tables. They were there at the Passover Seder because they were an essential part of the celebration of liberation from slavery and the hope of a future nation. And they would have been present with their fathers and mothers when Passover bread was broken and the cup was shared. They were there when he carried the cross through the narrow streets of Jerusalem and when he told the women of Jerusalem to not weep for him, but to weep for themselves and their children. They were there with their mothers at the crucifixion, although I hope and pray their mothers shielded their eyes as they would during a solar eclipse. But they were there. The children were there. They were present for another reason. They simply wanted to be near him. They had been touched throughout Jesus' ministry by his kindness and his love. They could see in his eyes the kind of person he was. They had been healed by him. They'd been taught by him. They'd been blessed by him, and I'm sure they played a few games with him. And I know that they brought their artwork to him to thank him for being their rabbi. They loved him. They believed him. They followed him and they led their parents to do the same. Earlier in the scripture, when the disciples were trying to figure out who they were, they formed a wall of protection around Jesus by the Sea of Galilee and would not let the children get anywhere close to him, and Jesus was not happy. He got mad and proclaimed, let the children come to me and do not stop them because the kingdom of God belongs to them. And I tell you, unless you become, see the pointing fingers, <laughs> unless you become like a child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Without a doubt, the children were central to Jesus' life and ministry. In fact, children have carried the heart and soul and the faithfulness throughout every religion, through all time and all traditions. It's children who lead us, they were the reason for his season. Jesus truly loved the little children. As the song says better than we can, he loved all the children of the world. In the third episode of season one of the truly remarkable four season series, The Chosen, we meet the children in an episode simply entitled, Jesus Loves the Little Children. We encounter Jesus as he, care, as he cares for the children. It's apocryphal in nature, but the reflection here is of Jesus' spirit in relation to people, particularly little people. He's funny, he's fun-loving, he's engaging, he's ever-present, he's listening to them all the time, he's joyful, he teaches them some stories, but I repeat to the fact that the story that he is fun, and they know it. In this episode, he's camping outside Capernaum, about to begin his ministry. He's alone, he's all by himself. 
And a girl is walking through the woods collecting food to take home and she sees him, she spots him far off with his little tent and she hides behind a rock and he doesn't, he has his back to her and he says, hello, what's your name? And he knows she's there and she's like, uh oh, <laughs> she freezes. But she meets him and greets him and then she keeps bringing her friends back to him. And as the episode goes on, all the children of the village have gathered around him and he shows them how to make fires, how to carve, how to whittle. Remember, he's the oldest of the carpenter's son and he's a craftsman. So he's teaching them things all the time. And by the time he has spent all this time with the kids in the show, he's, he's taught them how to cook, to tell stories, to listen to each other and to take care of each other, how to be kind to each other. And when he finally packs up and leaves and the episode comes to an end, he leaves behind dolls and he leaves behind handmade toys for each of the children made individually for them because he had come to know who they were and know what their love was. He has built relationships with them and reflects that in the gifts he leaves behind. I love this depiction of Jesus because it reflects what I believe to be true about the oldest son of Joseph and Mary's five children. He's really great with kids. His compassion and connections reaches to all ages for all time. As we walk into this Holy Week, there is a reason to put children at the heart of Jesus's story and our story. We are close to the end of this season of repentance and redemption. And we remember that the core of Jesus's message was a call for each of us to become like a little child. He doesn't call us to eat dust. He doesn't call us to mercilessly beat ourselves up by naming all of our failures and shortcomings in life and hope that God steps in and miraculously changes us. He calls us to radically change our outlook to fundamentally reorient our lives so that we are no longer trusting in the security that we've built for ourselves or lean into the persona that we've carefully crafted over time. He wants us to have the courage to become a child. He wants us to be receptive as children are receptive with all of their openness to life. He wants us to take down our barriers, throw away our armor, and stop lugging this stuff around that we call reality. That is what true repentance means. It means that there is more to you than you ever dreamt of. It means becoming bored with the quarter of yourself that has been developed and taking risks to allow that three quarters of you that is yet to become fully alive to come into being. It means taking a risk to surrender to the whole of you that you can become and thus to find more abundant life. He wants you and me to be fully alive and that's why he says become like a child. As we head into this Holy Week, we want to connect with him at the core of his message to become like little children and enter the kingdom of God that awaits us. Now, I know I make it sound easy to become a child again, and that's because I'm spoiled. I'm spoiled. I have seven grandchildren to remind me how easy it is, right? They show me all the time. I'm a very lucky man. The other night, I got a text from the father of Axel, who also has a name, Adam, right? You'll find this out. If you're not a grandparent yet, that's gonna happen. You forget the kids' names, but the grandchildren, oh my gosh. So I get a text from Adam saying, Axel must speak to you. I said, okay. So we get on with FaceTime and he needs to talk to me. He's been bothering his parents for hours about getting to talk to me. He's driving them crazy, right? So we get on FaceTime just before he goes to bed. I come on the screen and he cries out in the loudest voice, Papa, which loosely translates grandpa. Then he drops the phone, he's, he's about three years old, drops the phone, and now I'm looking at the ceiling on the phone, and his parents are laughing hilariously as he's taken off, right? He runs to the front door thinking he has conjured me up, and I would be there to take him out to play. So he cries out at the empty landing, Papa, where are you? 
And I'm, I'm laying on the, you know, I'm, you got a picture of me, like, looking up, right? It's like, I'm actually like this. I'm looking at the ceiling saying, I'm right here on the phone, Axel. So he comes back and he looks at me and he sighs, a deep sigh. <sighs> okay, Papa. But next time, come and get me. I love you, good night. And before I can say I love you, good night, he's gone. You see how easy it is? It's easy for me, I got Axel. If Axel can conjure up his grandfather through his creative imagination, I believe that you and I can enter the kingdom of God through our creative imagination of becoming like little children and growing closer to Jesus. I have faith that we can do this. So pay attention to Jesus this week as he moves through his passion and resurrection. See him on the donkey as hosannas are cried and palms are raised and laid down. See him in the temple praying and tossing tables. See him resting in Bethany and returning to Jerusalem. See him at the Passover Seder, breaking bread, pouring wine, and declaring his love and sacrifice for each of us. See him falsely accused and whipped and beaten and bearing the cross, and then being crucified at the hands of the Roman Empire, all for the salvation of the world. See him dead, see him buried, and then see him rise from the dead in a resurrection joy that will inspire you and give hope to every single generation. See him, hear him, feel him, break bread with him, drink the cup with him, listen to him, touch his cross, walk by his side, pray to him, pray with him, give yourself to him as his disciple. Become like a little child this week and enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen.